We're heading back to high blood pressure and high cholesterol. This book loves its medical statistics. It really does. So how we would use this to answer this question is, are high blood pressure and high cholesterol independent? Well, we want to remember what independent means in terms of not just the general definition. Independent means if are two, those are two events that one event does not affect the probability that the other occurs. And way at the beginning of the, class, the course, we talked about the Titanic and we looked at the graphs of the, uh, the fatalities and the survivors and their class, their ticket class or whether they were crew. And we saw that they weren't the same graphs. So we determined because those graphs weren't the same that they weren't independent. There's also a mathematical way to do it, that kind of, which is a little bit nicer because you actually can get a calculation and a number, uh, which I think is more reassuring to people. And what, um, what you want to do is you want to remember that this is the general um, idea for independence is if you've got two events A and B, the probability of A, if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, well then they're independent. That means that B didn't really change the likelihood that A would occur at all. And more specifically, we're going to look at it as probability of A given A and the probability of A and then the probability of A and B all over the probability of B. Now when you have your two-way table, it actually makes it very, very easy. And you get to pick, and, and we'll talk about why it doesn't really matter which order you pick it in uh, afterwards, but Let's just say um, we'll compare the probability of col high cholesterol to the probability of high cholesterol given high blood pressure. We could have flip-flopped that. We could have said, what's the prob we could have, on the left-hand side here, we could have said, what's the probability of finding someone with high blood pressure and on the other side, compared it to the probability of high blood pressure given they have high cholesterol. But we've one way or the other, it doesn't really matter so long as you set it up correctly. So the probability of someone with high cholesterol is 0.11 plus 0.12 is 0.32. we have a 32% or 0.32 probability of randomly selecting, I think these were males, uh, a male with high cholesterol. So now we're going to compare that. We're going to see if that changes. We're going to find what's the likelihood we find someone with high cholesterol if we are dealing with people that have high blood pressure. That's what this is saying. So we want to then limit ourselves to the high blood pressure group. So we're now saying, okay, we're not talking about generally speaking, we're talking about in this group of people with known high blood pressure. So the probability of both, the probability that they have both high blood, blood pressure and high cholesterol is 0.11. The probability that they ha have high blood pressure is 0.11. To seven. Okay. And we're going to just do that math, and it doesn't really matter. You can do just 11 divided by 27. And we get 0 0.32. Nothing changes over here. And you don't really, don't, this is not a situation where you need to really take it out to four decimal places because it's, I'll take it out to three. I'll really be a rebel. 407. These are not independent because if we are to look for people with high cholesterol in general, 
we have a 0.32 probability of finding them. If we look in the peop amongst the people with high blood pressure, we have a 0.407 probability. That means they're not independent. By putting that condition of high blood pressure on, we're changing the probability that we find someone with high cholesterol. That would mean that they're not independent. We flip flop, you know, the other, I'm not going to walk all the way through, I'm not going to do it all the way through, but if we did the other way, uh, if we said, if we just found the likelihood of high blood pressure and compared it to the probability of high blood pressure given high cholesterol, we would not have gotten the same numbers here, but we would have come to the same conclusion that they're not independent because whatever they are, they would not have been the same. It's not as though if, if you do it one way and your friend does it the other, there, those are good. Your conclusions are going to disagree, right? So this is a real. This is this idea of independence and being able to quantify it uh, is makes it. I say way more helpful than just looking at graphs or having to create graphs to look at them and say, well, they're not the same, so they're not independent. This is, you know, we can say they are not uh, independent. Don't try to say, don't try to explain why they're not or how they're not. You know, you just know they're not independent because l the numbers are different. Right? If they were, if they were the same, they would be independent, and the likelihood of getting cho high cholesterol would be the same regardless of we're looking in the high high blood pressure group. But since they're different, they're not independent. Please let me know if you have any questions, and as always, I hope this helped.